If you're looking how to determine importance factor, risk category, and seismic design category for your structure on your journey of your seismic design, sit tight because we're going through all of that today and we're getting into the little nuances of the code that you might not be aware of. Our problem, so we have two private high school buildings, so two separate buildings, each have an occupant load greater than 250 and the following design spectral acceleration parameters. One building is a traditional classroom wing. We'll just go number one. The other building is a gymnasium designed as an emergency shelter. Shelter. We are gonna highlight emergency shelter because that is crucial for that portion of it and you'll see why. Determine the following. Number one, we're gonna find the risk category and the seismic importance factor for each building. And then number two, we're gonna find the seismic design category, the SDC, uh, for each building as well. So let's start off with number one. Well, we all know in order to find risk category and importance factor, we wanna head over to the ASCE 716. Let's jump over there right now to chapter one. So here we are, and this is a description of each type of building that would fall under a uh, different risk category, one, two, three, or four. And uh, if we look and read through, so building number one, we will say is the classroom wing. And when we look through here, um, if you were to read through each one of these sections, there's nothing really that great that kind of makes you feel, feel absolutely 100% with one of these risk categories. It, it, it's being kind of vague in the 716. So you're like, well, what do I do from here? Do we just kind of guess? No, you never just guess. Um, what you want to do if you're not finding an absolute solid answer is now we want to head over to the IBC. This has the same criteria for risk category um, classification, except they expand upon it and give more detailed uh, descriptions. So let's head over there right now. Now we're in the IBC. We find ourselves in chapter 16, structural design for all of you structural engineers out there. Your, your cozy home where you are most of the time when you need to check out the IBC. We scroll down just a little bit and we find ourselves on page 364 with this beautiful table. So table 1604.5, risk category of buildings and other structures. It's the same thing, only it's, as you can see, more detailed descriptions. And we are gonna look, I'm gonna give you a little pointer here. We're gonna look in risk category three and uh, we will find ourselves, and again, I want you to read through each of these to get an understanding of the criteria of each, but saying that you've done that, uh, you will find yourselves right here. Buildings and other structures containing group E occupancies with an occupant load greater than 250. And you're like, well, is that us? I'm still not sure. I'm new at this. What is group E? Like, is that... It didn't talk about that in the problem description. That wasn't given to us. So let's go determine what group E is to make sure that this is our, our classification. And in order to determine occupancy class, you're gonna head over to chapter three of the IBC. So let's head up there now. Beautiful chapter three, occupancy classification and use. Section 302.1, occupancy classification. And if we go down here to number three, Educational, C section 305 for group E. So education is us, it's a classroom wing. So education E, see how they're kind of connecting the dots here a little bit, trying to make it uh, as straightforward as possible. Let's go check out section 305 and see what they're talking about here. Here we are, education group E. And if we read, we see that educational group E occupancy includes among others, the use of a building or structure, or portion thereof um, by six or more persons at any one time for educational purposes through the 12th grade. Oh my gosh, it was uh, specified that this is a high school, which means that we, have, we fall right into that category. So we can confidently say that we are indeed occupancy E. So let's head back and see if now uh, we can be confident about that description and determine our risk category. So we have confirmed that we are group E, or uh, we do contain, so we have, oh, la, 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 let's erase that. So we have confirmed that our wing is a structure that contains group E occupancies, so that's beautiful right there. 
with an occupant load greater than 250. That was given to us in the problem statement that we would have um, an occupancy load greater than 250. So we are solid here. This is our classification, which means we are risk category three for building number one, which is the classroom wing. All right, let's go write that down. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do the gymnasium is gonna be green and the classroom wing is gonna be red. So red, we have risk category equaling three and we're asked to find the importance factor. That can be done very easily now. And uh, you can actually head back, you can stay in the IBC or you can head back to the uh, ASCE 716. Let's head to the 716 right now. We see table 1.5-2 is important factors by risk category of building. We know we're risk category three and we are determining seismic importance factor. And we're gonna scroll all the way across here because we have seismic here, I sub E and we zone in on an importance factor of 1.25. Done. Building one is done for the first part of this problem. Let's go on to building two, which is the new gymnasium. All right, importance factors in. Now we're ready for our own gymnasium. Let's first start again with the 716 and see if uh, one of those definitions applies directly to us, and then we don't have to go further with the IBC. So head to the 716 again. Uh, chapter one, same tables for risk categories. As we look through, again, the descriptions per the 716, there's nothing quite that falls into a gymnasium um, that's used as a shelter in, a, in an emergency event. The closest I'd say, because I'm a little more used to this, is this area right here. Buildings and other structures designed as essential facilities. And an essential facility is a facility that should remain operational in a post seismic event that can supply um, emergency response um, for cleanup, for sheltering, um, for you know general public use um, during a disaster and after a disaster occurred. So I know that that actually does apply to us, but for all of you new who it doesn't say outright that it's this is a shelter, um, Let's head over to the IBC and see if they give more clarification. As we look through, we can see the following. Designed earthquake, hurricane, or other emergency shelters. Although this is a gymnasium, it is also to be designed as an emergency shelter in the case of, you guessed it, an emergency. Hello, how are we love? Not gonna include that. Uh, and then from there, let's head back to the 716 and determine our importance factor. With a risk category four, uh, I'll go green now. We find ourselves here, still doing um, seismic importance factor, which scrolls us past and bumps us up to now an importance factor of 1.5 instead of 1.25 for our classroom wing. Let's put all that in and then let's see what we have remaining. Beautiful, so that is in blue. Uh, determine number one is done, and now number two, the seismic design category, the SDC for each building. In order to determine your seismic design category, you need to ch head to chapter 11 of the ASCE 716. See you over there. Here we are, and we're actually gonna scroll down specifically to chapter 11.6. We find ourselves on page 85, and this is our bread and butter right here. We have information here, we have table 11.6-1 and 11.6-2. So you need to check all three of these and you have to use the worst case based on the three different options given here. Let's, I'm gonna do this in a little reverse order because you'll see why here. Let's start off with tables 11.61, then we'll do 11.62 and then we'll check um, the description above that. And this is all based on your SDS and your SD1, which was provided um, in the design example. So we have an SDS equal to 1.17, and we have an SD1 equal to 0 0.75. Well, we have a risk category for, so let's start with building one, which is the classroom addition, and it's this, these are the same parameters for both buildings, so it's the same location, all right? With an SDS of 1.17, a risk category of three, you simply scroll over here to the side and you see where your SDS lands you, so our SDS is greater than 0 0.5, so it's this last one, which means we scroll all the way down and we have a risk category D for building one. 
And now let's check it for table 11.6-2. Again, still building one. So risk category three. This time it's SD1, and that's 0 0.75, which still lands us at the bottom one. SD1 is greater than 0 0.2, which lands us at risk category, or excuse me, at seismic design category D. So building one based on those two options is seismic design category D. This is our gymnasium, which we know is risk category four. Um, that means we just scroll all the way down here. It's D, and then we go to 11.6-2. Uh, it's risk category four. We go all the way down. It's D. So D again, we'll go plug that in. Real straightforward, real simple. All right, now that we have that, you think, all right, I'm done. But there's still one more section to check, and that is 11.6, and I'm just going to call it text. It's the text body above those two tables. And let's see if it says anything a little wonky that we might have to uh, take into consideration. We need to make note that S1 was given in this problem, and it was 0 0.75. That's an important number, um, because as we read here, it breaks it up into risk categories one, two, and three, and then also risk category four. With building one, the classroom extension, we're risk category three. So it says risk category three structures located where the mapped spectral response acceleration parameter at one second period, S sub one, um, is greater than or equal to 0 0.75. We are equal to 0 0.75. Shall be assigned to seismic design category E. So that is a higher SDC than D, which was found in the tables below. So we'll have to make that update. Well, what about the other building? Risk category four structures, which is our gymnasium. Structures located where uh, S1 is greater than or equal to also 0 0.75. So that triggers us as well. Shall be assigned to seismic design category F, which is a big doozy there. So this text body governs over the tables below. So let's head back, plug that in, and get our final solution. We have an SDC equal to E for building one, SDL, SDC. And for building two, we have an SDC of F. It can seem very simple uh, as you start to get repetitive in, uh, if you are an engineer designing in seismic country, to knock out the importance factor and the risk category um, because the 716 kind of is slightly vague and you can get into a repetitive motion of just like, oh, it's risk category two, it's risk category three, and so on and so on. Um, but there's a lot, there can be a lot more to it than that and you need to watch out for those outliers um, and exactly like this problem shows where there's little bits of additional information in the code that can kick you into alternate design routes. So be careful on that. Don't just blow through this stuff because this is the first bit of information that you collect as an engineer when starting seismic design of your structure. So don't overlook it. Take your time, be confident, and move on from there. That's it for today. Um, happy Thanksgiving to everybody here in the United States and around the world. I hope you have a great, uh, not holiday, but hope you have a holiday all the same. I appreciate every single one of you and I'll see everybody next time. Later.